it's Naya J and I'm gonna do a part two to a day in a life as a CNA and the things you need to know for becoming a CNA so this is my second day for the month because I'm PRN so I it's technically registry so I only have to work a required four days a month since I'm in school I had to decrease the amount of days I worked but I only have to do four days which is which is cool I like that but as far as the things you need to know you have to go to school to get certified because you cannot work in a hospital without being certified some facilities do allow you to get certified through them like on the job type of thing but most facilities do not do that now while working you do have to keep in mind that you're going to see a lot of things you're going to deal with a lot of body fluids you know so if you're not the type for that and you're easily disgusted I wouldn't recommend this job unless you're willing to work on it and it's not an extreme disgust and you can like stand smells because the smells do get strong you just have to have the stomach for it because if you don't have a stomach for it, this field specifically then this isn't going to be a good fit for you with that being said some units are worse than others some patients are more dependent on you than others because not everybody is able to walk get up use the bathroom on their own things like that so there may be a unit that you could work on that with the less dependent people or maybe you could be a home aid with a person who kind of just needs someone to look over them make sure they're doing all right that type of thing may be for you so there is a lot of things that can be done in this field so if you do want to try it I recommend giving it a try because it is only two months and it's like about a few thousand dollars for the schooling in the certificate and then once you do go to school you have to take a state test and for each state it's different and there's different requirements so if you do ever move and want to practice in another state you're going to have to get certified in that state unless the the requirements are similar sometimes it can transfer sometimes it can't so you have to keep that in mind as well. Or if you do plan on moving anytime soon, then you should just get certified in the state that you're moving to. Also with the schooling, you have to really put in the time to remember the things you're taught because you need every single thing that you learn in class. Everything is important, literally, because you're going to use it every day when you begin to work. Schooling also comes with on-hand experience, like getting clinical hours. So in school, you get the hours with the school, depending on, on the school, or you may have to go out and do it on your own. But getting the experience in clinical hours is key to actually understanding and developing your own skills. And for me, I had only used like the stimulation type of thing so I would say I didn't really get the experience as in dealing with personalities of people and actually dealing with actual bowel movements or just real scenarios because it was just a stimulation it was just practice so then when I actually became a CNA and was working it was a little different dealing with people so you have to also keep that in mind because in school they only tell you so much about experiences but 
some some experiences are a make or break it's either for you or it's not you could deal with it or you can't so it's one of those type of things that you have to really be prepared for because every day you come in it's not gonna be easy some days it's gonna be hard some days it's gonna be in the middle it just all depends on the type of situations these people are in the conditions they have and it just depends on if, if there's staff if there's not it's a lot of factors that go into the day in a life as a cna because it varies day by day it can be slow on some days it could be a lot going on on some days so it really just depends so that's why when you come in just have a clear mind and try to get through the day and if you need help ask for help don't be scared to ask for help because you can hurt yourself in this job when there's someone that's maybe too hard for you to lift on your own get some help or if you don't remember how to do something ask for help because you don't want to get hurt or you don't want to hurt the patient youtube is also a good tool if you don't know something because you can just look up a certain procedure that you have to do and watch the video and then boom you know how to do it because cnas and nurses the things you have to do are a little bit different because nurses are obviously more qualified they've had more schooling so they can do more than what a cna can do so if you need any help with anything look on youtube and ask your nurse now once you went to school learned everything you need to know and you get hired it's going to be a whole process background checks testing to make sure you know no drugs in your system you have to be up to date on your vaccinations flu covid because if not you're not going to be able to work so it's important before you even go to school just make sure that your all your health things are taken care of physicals vaccinations because you need all that stuff to become a cna and work because they want to make sure that you're fully capable on taking on this job as a cna because it is a serious job and you have a lot of responsibilities when you're working it's also important to come in focused in a clear mind because it's going to be a lot coming in you have to be focused because you have to make sure that you're keeping yourself safe and these patients safe from injuries because it can't happen when you're not paying attention or using the correct skills as far as body mechanics because it is really about body mechanics that doesn't i would say it's not a hundred percent guarantee from injuries but it does work and you should use it just to make sure that you're able to move the patient properly and you're not hurting your knees, your backs, your arms, especially because outside of the job, you need those to work well just for you in your daily life. I would also say get to know the people you work with because they're what makes it fun and bearable while you're here because this environment gets rough sometimes and you gotta need some other people to lift you up in those times like cracking jokes that type of thing and then building that relationship you guys can have talks have fun you know it, it just makes the whole environment so much better when you have other people to talk to while you're at work the shifts are also 12 hours you have to keep in mind that you're going to get tired so if you need coffee have your coffee anything that's going to give you energy have it with you because you're going to need that water and just do something that keep you up and moving for those 12 hours some places like nursing homes do have just eight hour shifts so if you're more willing to do an eight hour shift you could do the eight hour shift but you're going to have to work more days during the week to meet your required hours but if you would rather work less days then then you would work only the 12 hours